Hello everyone, uh, a, this video is a beginner's guide to how to make uh, safely uh, money on EV uh, online. Uh, I won't show you how to make a huge humongous amount of money obviously because uh, this requires this requires way more skills and uh, being it, it, it requires uh, being a uh, uh, far more developed at the game and also and also uh, to go to the very dangerous places but that's not that's not the aim of this guide the, the guide is just for beginning players who want to want to make some decent amount uh, ISK currency easily and uh, fairly safely uh, in this game you have to make a purchases basically There's, it's inevitable so uh, uh, you need to you need to have some sort of source of income and at the same time without losing ships constantly and, and losing equipment so in this guide I'm going to show you several very easy things that you can do to make quite decent money which allows you to buy most basic ships uh, that they're gonna do the job for you and also uh, to buy some nice equipment and fitting for those ships uh, so let's get started first of all the most important thing is that uh, very basic stuff very obvious stuff uh, what I what I noticed that a lot of people have a tendency to completely forgot forgot about obvious things uh, so let me just start from that just from the beginning about about this um, when you look at your neocom you have this wallet icon uh, my cursor is just over it right now right when you click on it and when you have this IS, you have this ISK tab, which shows how much ISK currency you have. Uh, then you've got flex, loyalty points. I'm just not going to talk about it right now. Let's focus on ISK. The most important thing that you always need to remember is this: that your income has to be larger than your expenses. This is such an obvious thing, basically. You need to make more than you spend. If you make more than you spend, it you. There is no way you cannot grow your money account in the long run. Okay? Imagine for a moment this 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 income is one one hundred million ISK. And my expenses are seventy million ISK. So I'm in plus thirty million. This will be reflected here. Right? Now somebody might say, okay, but this is thirty million that you have. Right? Uh, this 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 ratio doesn't doesn't make you grow of course it does imagine for a for instance that i'm keeping this ratio this difference of 30 million over the long run always so then i'm i'm, I'm keep earning and at the same time i keep spending and at some point i'm going to arrive at 200 million isk income and 140 uh, million isk uh, expenditure okay so I just doubled those figures but the ratio remains the same so now my ISK count will be 60 million twice 30 and so on so if as long as you keep this ratio as long as you basically earn more than spend your account your amount of ISK have to grow in the wrong run uh, that's inevitable and nothing can stop this this is just sheer mathematics basically so uh, this is the obvious stuff, but a lot of people just forget about it. They they focus on oh my god I need to make a lot of money I need to I need to go to wormholes everywhere everywhere I get 100 million uh, immediately. No, of course I mean if you have skills and if if you have if you are Omega account so you can buy clocking device, cloaking device so you can hide from potential gankers and sleepers, then uh, then fine of course. By all means, but if you're just a beginner, uh, and especially if you don't want to spend money for Omega account at the moment, then just you don't want to venture on those dangerous places. But you still have to make money. So and so this is something that you, you don't need to worry about. Uh, you don't need to earn 
heck of a lot of money as long as you maintain in plus the ratio between income and expenses you're gonna have that money and they're gonna grow yeah it, it, it's inevitable uh, so what you always need to remember just from time to time look at this wallet and look at this ratio yeah because you're gonna find yourself uh, buying this or selling this and uh, you might lose the truck whether you're spending uh, less than than you're earning so from time to time uh, without without much stress or anything but from time to time just look at it and make sure that this ratio is positive that means that your accounts are going in green not in red and once you keep this ratio all the time just, don't worry you're gonna make money yeah it's just a question of how fast or how slow but generally you you have to the, the, there's no other way it's just 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 a normal thing so out of the obvious stuff which is still very important to remember so for the beginners to do fairly fairly safely to make some income there are generally three things that you can do first of all you can run the agency missions this is the um, income that is definitely the smallest one most interesting because missions are fun yeah but they won't give you that much money than other two ways that I'm gonna show you uh, but here there you go you can by all means you should do them take a look but for instance I've got this pending mission uh, I'm not doing it right now I'm just gonna do it later but when I'm gonna start conversation yeah you see for this particular mission I can earn 128,000 ISK plus bonus 144,000 ISK that's a good thing yeah altogether if I run it and if I complete it uh, and if I complete it in time to get a bonus then I'm gonna have uh, 272,000 ISK exactly um, pure income yeah uh, and it's obviously the very good fun to run the missions but those agent missions they rarely go above that all right of course the, the higher the level the more income but that comes with the difficulty especially especially uh, uh, with the uh, security missions but you can always use lose your ship but definitely missions the, the, there is some sort of like a steady income you can go for easier missions like um, uh, those missions that that you can deliver some goods from one place to another but they pay significantly less than security but by all means that's the that's the one way that's the point to start there are two other ways which can potentially give you much more money and one of them is exploration and I'm not talking about exploration in a warm holes in some dangerous dead space etc etc just a high sec exploration and this is where I'm going to start from now to be able to do the exploration you need a ship that has a buff or, or, or some sort of like bonus on exploration things but for Galante that I'm running it's Imicus so when I look at this info of this ship it has 7.5 uh, bonus on core and combat scanner probes strength uh, some bonus about salvager, salvager duration and uh, uh, virus strength of relic and data analyzer which means that it's going to be a little bit easier for you to hack to relics or data sites so that's what you need now you need uh, some sort of fit to that ship so when my fit is like I mean I'm just go for pretty basic stuff so I've got core probe launcher but I, I use expanded probe launcher because um, uh, it allows to load more probes so you don't have to reload that often I've got some gun just in case if somebody tries to attack me and I want to have some sort of like extra extra uh, defensive mechanism but not that particularly important because if you go to the high sec usually you won't get attacked 
Uh, I've got this afterburner just to speed my movements up. Uh, cargo scanner, which allows me to see what's inside the cargo. Yeah? So I don't waste time opening something that's empty. So I, I see what's inside and see, oh, okay, there's nothing in there. So I can leave it for later. Or I can just abandon the idea of scanning it. Uh, then I have data analyzer, which is like for objects in the data sites where this is uh, necessary to hack to them to be able to open the cargo. And I've got a relic analyzer, which have the same function as data analyzer. It just works on the relic sites uh, rather than data sites. Uh, also in the low power slot, I've got uh, overdrive inject uh, injection system. It speeds up my afterburner a little bit, gives me extra velocity. Uh, I'm a player who likes to move around quickly, I like to be able to maneuver quickly, and so that, that's why I put it. You don't have to, yeah, that's not necessary, it's just my personal preference, basically. And of course, in my uh, uh, cargo hold, I keep core scanner probes, because this launcher here is useless without them. So, um... oh, I should have 16. Ah, because I've got eight in the launcher. And I can just put the rest here. Then I will have a 16. I won't have to reload. I carry some uh, extra ammunition. Again, if you uh, uh, explore in a high security, you, you usually won't encounter any any attackers. Uh, and I've got two drones in the bay. Uh, I could actually have more. Well, I just noticed that. But I have only two. Let's see if I have more somewhere stashed here. Well, let's put a little bit more. Right. Okay. Now I have now I have more. Just in case. Right. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's what you need. So we need exploring ship but for Galantis Imicus, for other uh, if you are a member of other uh, other faction. Uh, let's take a look. Sorry, no faction federation. Uh, let's say if you are a Mar, then which one will be? There will be Magnate. That one. If you are a of Cal a member of Caladari, uh, there will be. Uh, where is this ship? Heron, this one, etc., etc. You you can always look at the uh, ship tree if you want to. Just basically the one, the one with core probe launchers or probe scanners bonus. That's that that's the right one to uh, to do the exploration. Now the easiest way to find the sites, exploration sites, if you just go to the agency. Let me just go back to the home page. Uh, the home page will open and get exploration tab. Go to cosmic signatures because this is what most of you are looking for. And then uh, you can filter. You can narrow down how many jumps away you want to scan for signatures. And is it security status high sec, low sec, null sec, or any security? Yeah. So I always choose high sec. Uh, you want will earn massive millions and billions in high sec, but you can still have a decent in income as a beginner, right? And then look at the results here, and you've got different systems. Uh, now, uh, game tells you how many jumps away are there, and how many signatures you can find. Now, a little bit of a tip, piece of advice, don't go anywhere with the one signature in the system. Uh, or two signatures. Try to avoid them. They will usually won't be useless places. I start from uh, four, rarely three, unless there's nothing else. But I start usually from four upwards. That gives me the better chances that I'm going to find data site or relic site. So here I've got the first one, one jump away, five signatures in the system. So I'm just going to set destination, and I'm going to go there. 
and uh, we're just gonna do a little bit of exploration hopefully we're gonna find something so I can show you uh, more or less how much money you can make so let's just go ahead and jump I've made a little bit of a video, training video about exploration. Uh, in here I'm just going to add a couple of tips in addition to it. It won't be much, so... Because there is not like many things about exploration. You just basically need to need to know certain things and you're going to be very successful. Um, it's not a rocket science, basically. Okay, so I arrive, I arrive at site. But first of all, because I'm going to be scanning and looking in the signatures, I won't be that focused on what's going on around me. So I'm just doing some certain safety precautions. So first of all, I'm just going to orbit the station about 20 kilometers away. I'm going to launch my drones in the space, just in case if there's any, uh, any person who wants to attack me or something. Never happened, by the way, but you never know. Uh, right, and then we're ready to go. So we go here, scanners, probe scanner, we click on it, and we've got five possible cosmic signatures. So I'm just going to launch the probe. Right, and there are a couple of tips. When we uh, actually zoom in, right, you see there's those little dim reddish spheres around signatures well when you start scanning you want to make sure that your blue spheres which they represent your uh, probe uh, your probes that those blue spheres are covering those red ones as well this will greatly improve your results so i'm just gonna go and uh, make a probe size big enough to cover all those red spheres uh, nothing more. We don't need anything more. As long as they're covered, we're fine. Yeah, so they're covered now. So I'm just going to hit and analyze and see the results. Okay, so uh, the one that gave me higher signal is just uh, on top of here is 8.7%. So I'm just going to uh, do something that I haven't told you in the first video. You need to double click it When you double click it, it will pinpoint this particular signature and also it will center it Which is important for the next step and now as you remember from the first video I'm just gonna move the tube in here So this signature dot is inside then I'm gonna double click to make sure that it is inside here as well so we're looking at the horizontal and vertical view of that one. Double click again. And now there's a little hint. Because you might think that just because I'm in the middle now, I'm exactly in this location of this signature, which is not true. Look what happens when I zoom the screen. You see, we are actually not exactly there. So you need to zoom and correct the inaccuracy you see then you need to zoom again and it's still not accurate so you need to maximize your zoom and then you need to put this cube over this little dot and then you can narrow down the search and analyze uh, with some easy signatures it's not necessary, but sometimes you're gonna find the signatures that you just have to zoom it because they have a, such a weak signal they're hard to track. So you might as well do it just from the very beginning. Uh, okay, so this signature improved to 18.1%. So I'm just gonna double click again to make sure that I'm in the center, and I'm gonna repeat the process. And zoom. And 
zoom again to make sure that I'm in the middle, narrow down, and analyze. So this is just like a little bit of... This is, this is a small thing that gives you an advantage, basically. So we've got a wormhole, yeah? Uh, this gives us a result of wormhole, we, I don't want to go there. But we've got this signature here with 12.8%, so let's just double click. Move this here, and there's going to be another tip. I'm going to go to it, but let me first of all make sure that this cube is really on this signature uh, in the most accurate way possible. Now, I'm not going to narrow down probe size just yet. I'm going to now unzoom it and make sure that this signature doesn't have this red little dim sphere around it. Or if it does, I want to make sure that my probes actually are covering it. Uh, this time I don't see any sphere, so I'm fine. But sometimes you'll find yourself in the position that you actually have to... When you move to the new signature, you actually have to widen the probe size before you can start narrowing it down. Uh, we, we don't have to do it now with this particular one, so I can just shrink this probe size and then rise again. And see the results. Oh, here's a relic site. Perfect. That's what we were looking for. Okay, double click again. Now we just need to narrow it down until we actually can warp there. See, this zooming is very important. Uh, with the weaker signals, you're going to find yourself in the position if you don't zoom. You're going to find yourself in the position that this signature is going to be jumping from one place to another, one place to another, and you're going to be just chasing it. And uh, it is sometimes very hard to pick up strong signal enough to warp. When you zoom, you make sure that you're actually in the middle of it, really in the middle of it. Here we go, now we get 73%. So I'm just going to double click again, which is going to take me straight there. All I need to do is to unzoom a little bit to find the cube and place it over it. We're almost there. Narrow down. And this time I can bet that it's going to turn green in this turn. There you go. Right, so now we can just get the probes back. So recover probes. Now I can minimize this. Get my drones back so I don't leave them behind when I warp. Go back to the screen, right click, warp within 100, uh, 0 meters, and off we go. Now with the relic sites on the high sec, you usually don't get that uh, much pricey stuff as uh, in data sites. However, this stuff it's necessary to um, make some rigs from the blueprints and several. For several types of rigs, Blueprint is actually much cheaper than the rig itself. So uh, it's worth to gather this stuff uh, rather than sell them. Uh, but that's entirely up to you, of course. Um, oh. I'm here, I'm just going to show you roughly how much money you can make. So I marked all the containers with the possible things inside. I'm 
just gonna go an orbit first one on 2500 meters. Now since I'm still quite far away, uh, in the meantime I can do cargo scanner and see what's inside. There's nothing here. Let's check this one. Empty. Oh, here we go. By here, you've got some materials, and when you manage to open it, uh, you uh, make yourself around 1 million ISK straight away from one exploration yeah uh, on this one I'm not gonna sell those items because I'm collecting them to make rigs but if you don't want to make rigs by all means you can just sell them and this is very nice 1 million in income for you which is for the beginner is quite good here there's something as well so I'm just gonna start from the A second, which one it was? I'm gonna start from uh, from this one that has this one million worth of goods. I think it unlocked itself. Yeah. Let's double check. This one empty too. Yeah, this one is empty too. Unlock. So there must be. I think this most distant one. Now let's approach it. Now because we're 51 kilometers away from it now, I'm just gonna start this afterburner just to approach it a little bit faster. So I can actually lock the target. There we go. Let me just double check if this one is with this one million should be. No, this one is a smaller one. Okay, what about that one? I forgot now which one is which. It happens sometimes, don't worry about it too much. Uh, it's perfectly normal. Uh, actually, I was closer to the one million. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Right, okay. So let's go back. Orbit that one million and we're gonna hack into it. Hopefully our hack attempt will be successful there will be a couple of things that I want to tell you also when we're gonna start hacking I need to approach this object for a distance of five kilometers and then my relic analyzer will be able to to start hacking as you can see when you hover around it the range is five five kilometers so uh, we need to be five or less and we are now let's start Okay, now there's something that I didn't mention in the first video, uh, and you might see it sometimes in other online tutorials. There's a rule of six. Basically, the rule of six means that if you have any of those circles here, which we call nodes, and if a circle is connected to other six, then it, this is a safe node. So you shouldn't encounter any firewall, anything to hinder your, your hacking. There are no safe nodes in this display here like this one is for instance is only uh, connected to five other nodes this one to four other nodes etc so we just need to go start going and uh, try to find the system core now this is very important tool you make sure that you take it this little wrench it will help you to reload your uh, uh, relic analyzer just in case if you if it gets depleted by going through firewalls there is another tip if you see the number higher than one yeah here and you don't have anything to repair yet uh, just try to follow in the direction uh, of the higher number so now you see the two so I'm pretty safe to go here and there's still two so I can go here now it's three which is good as well four which is good three this decreases the chances of me to hit the firewall if i go somewhere there is one written 
then there is a chance that you have either system core, which is great, but more more often or not, it's actually a chance that you're going to hit the firewall which block you, will block you, and uh, breaking each firewall depletes your analyzer. So, so you want to you wanna try to be with the higher number, highest number. Doesn't always work, as you can see. We hit the firewall here. We cannot go any further. But thanks to that, I've got still still have some nodes that I can pursue without actually breaking this firewall. Let's see here. Two. The more nodes are open safely, the greater the chances are that I'm going to find the system call without having to encounter firewall. So as far as I remember, there was one here, so let me just try to do this one. And I've got another repair tool, which is perfect. Now this was number one, I think, near this firewall, so I'm just going to repair it a little bit. So you see this virus coherence thing went up. Two, one, five from there, and this is my system core. Excellent. So I can just click it until we hack is successful, and now I can open the cargo. So remember always rule of six. You're looking for nodes that are connected to other six nodes, then they are safe. You're not going to encounter a resistance over there. And also the other thing is when, when you get the node, then it tells you that you're five five steps away from, from something, just go for it. Because ultimately you want to open as many nodes as possible without triggering firewall. This increases your probability of actually finding system call. Alright, so let's approach the other one. Which is 37 kilometers away, so I'm just going to speed it up a little bit. The other two are empty. I'm not going to open them this time uh, because uh, I want to go to the other may, uh, means of making uh, income rather than digging deeper into the uh, exploration. It's just to show you how you can make money. Basically, that's, that's the main thing that I want to I want to tell you in this video. Right, we're almost there. And we can start analyzing. So, coming back to rule of six. This is the safe node because it is connected to other six. This is the safe node because it's connected to other six, as you can see. Yeah. Uh, and there are no other safe nodes. So I'm gonna first try to get to the safe node. I still got number two, so my chances increase that I'm gonna actually get to the safe node. Yeah, I've opened them now, and I've got some possibilities. Another firewall. My possibilities are shrinking now. Oh, repair tool, always very important. Another repair tool. Fantastic. Five, five, I still should be safe. Four, hit the firewall. And this is the last node that I can open. Okay, now I will have to open the firewall. I'm just gonna do this one. No, I need to open another one. There's nowhere, nowhere else to go. I'm just gonna do this one this time. And that's my system core. Now, my analyzer is a bit depleted, so I'm going to use those tools to make sure that I can actually open the system core. And we're in. Here we go. That's our loot. And that's about it. And we can go back. Don't forget to return your drones to the bay. Always a good thing. I'm gonna set destination to my home station this time. I 
I'm just going to show you because I accumulated some of this stuff already. I'm just going to show you after this uh, accumulating uh, of those how much money actually I have in the assets. And it took me like, I don't know, two, three days maybe of exploration. Uh, scattered over one week. So I wasn't doing it just every day. One day I just I just told myself, okay, I'm going to do some exploration. The other day, oh, I'm going to do some exploration. Active. No stress. Completely no pressure. Uh, but in assets I already have some nice money. So I'm just going to show you uh, how much more or less you can make. For about very very lazy leisurely uh, exploration of relic sites only. I've done some data sites by the way as well. So um, I'm just gonna get to my home station. There's seven jumps altogether so uh, I'm gonna be back with you when, when I'm actually uh, uh, at my station. There's no need to record six jumps journey journey. I'm gonna pause the video for a second. Okay, so I'm just about to dock in my home station. Just the last warp. And then you will see uh, those relic sites goods. Which you can sell Docking or you can use them to, to produce rigs. Uh, with those rigs blueprint uh, you need those relic sites uh, loots to be able to to be able actually to to produce to use the rig and those things like here like chart micro circuit for instance you cannot buy them if you try to buy them uh, they're not for sale uh, there's by this type uh, oh actually this time it's for sale oh which is nice change you can actually buy oh well, that's a very good thing but it's not like um, uh, you see the bid price is 16, almost 17,000 ISK. Uh, let's see if we can buy this immediately. We can buy this imme immediately. Okay, so uh, sometimes you can, but in many stations they're just not available. And besides, besides, why would you buy them if you can just gather them from the relics? Uh, so, uh, let's have a look if I want to sell, how much I can make. If I sell this with immediate, uh, those 13 broken drone transceivers, then I'm going to get 124,000 ISK. The other one, 208,000 ISK. This one, this one is cheap, only 8,000. Uh, if I sell this one, 90,000, still cheap. This one alone costs 10,000. If you accumulate those uh, those conductive thermoplastics, if you if you get more of them, you can have a very very nice income. Uh, what about this one? Two million, two and a half million. If I wanted to sell it, here we go straight away. This one, 14,000. Some of them are not that... Uh, they don't sell that well. This one is 23,000. This one, I've just got only one of, one of them. Uh, this one is not particularly... Is not selling particularly well. But this thing, Lawrence Floyd, for one item is 49 thousand if you have 10 of those fluids you're looking at uh, almost uh, half a million so uh, some of them are really really good for sale this one is not particularly 
This one is cheap as well. This one is relatively cheap as well. But some of them gives you very, very nice money if you sell them. And also you can use them to do to do uh, uh, to make uh, rigs from blueprint. So if I just use this blueprint for instance, I still need those smash trigger units. They are very hard to come by. Yeah, uh, and uh, at some station you can just purchase those items. I've tried, couldn't find any. If I had those, I can make the uh, collision accelerator, uh, which is basically the small projectile collision accelerator. It, it, it uh, increases the the damage uh, dealt by our. Uh, uh, projectile weapons, which is a good thing, obviously, like any improvements are a good thing. Uh, uh, this, if I use this blueprint, I'm still missing tangled power conduit, yeah, but I can make, I can make small ancillary current router, which as far as I remember, what does it do? I don't remember now, what does it do, but I think it has something to do with increasing the uh, power of the ship. Yeah. So anyway, so this is the one of the ways of making income in the high sec, relatively safe. It won't give you billions, but it's it's good to have this extra two, three, four million uh, from data sites. If you come up at the data site. You might get even even better money. I think my best loot from data site was five million worth of goods from one container. It doesn't happen that often. Don't get too excited, but sometimes it happens. So this this is a good source of income for beginners, and it will nicely keep you afloat. But the other source of income is mining. Uh, or mining. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to post this video. I'm going to move my ship actually to the place when I have a fully uh, uh, fitted mining ship, and I'm going to tell you how to how to mine ore in a smart way, so you can get more money out of it. So. Uh, I'll be back. I'm going to be in a different station with a different ship uh, when I resume the video. All right, we're back. Now, as you can see, I've got a different ship. Uh, this ship is uh, very basic stuff designed to uh, it designed for mining. It's uh, called Venture. Uh, it's relatively cheap to buy. And also, if you run those uh, uh, agency career missions, uh, I think at some stage you're going to get one uh, free of charge anyway. It's a good for mining because it has ore hold, which has capacity of uh, 5,000 cubic meters, which is quite a lot. Uh, so you can easily use it to to for profitable mine mining. Uh, now the fitting of this one. Uh, this is a pretty standard. Uh, I put miner number two twice. Miner miner requires turret, and this uh, ship has only two turret slots. So I put two miners just to speed up the process of mining, basically. And I've just invested a little bit for miner two, which takes more uh, more uh, cubic meters per uh, per minute uh, from the asteroid. Also, I've got battery here, uh, which uh, increases my capacitor, and the reason for that is that because I like to use uh, micro warp drive, because I like to be able to move quickly. Uh, I'll tell you why in a moment. And also a uh, shield booster as well. And I've got here in a low slot, I've got a uh, low slot, I've got a mining laser upgrade, which gives me a little bit more stuff from those miners, actually. Uh, for each circle. Uh, 
just just to basically to to speed up the process so it doesn't take doesn't take that long. Now, why do I use micro warp, micro warp drive? Uh, the problem with this ship is that uh, if you want to mine quickly, you cannot put any guns in here to defend yourself. So you need to rely on drones and your uh, manu uh, speed of your manu maneuvers. Uh, so, because when you go to asteroid belts to mine, it is very likely that you're going to encounter um, rats, NPC ships, and they won't leave you alone until you get rid of them. Uh, so for that you've got drones, I, I'm taking drones, and uh, uh, and I want to make sure that I can move around f quickly. I mean, this micro warp drive gives me gives me maximum velocity of 2,273 meters per second, which is which is very fast. But to be able to do that, I need this battery to support my um, capacitor. As you can see, with the battery, capacitor is stable, so it's not going to deplete with all this beating. Okay, so uh, this is a, like pretty much nice uh, basic fitting and all this fitting is not that particularly expensive so it's, this is a little bit of an investment which if you mine or in a smart way it's gonna return itself very quickly now uh, to find quickly nice asteroid belts uh, instead of just going to space and just chasing them randomly you can go again to agency and this time you're going to resource harvesting and you've got asteroid belts and when you click them uh, the principle is pretty much the same as with uh, uh, with uh, uh, exploration you've got a filter so you can you can filter location here's any distance I'm not gonna do it I just want maximum 10 jumps uh, I don't want to travel somewhere far away just to mine some more high security uh, or types uh, basically I'm just gonna choose any uh, in high security asteroid belts you can anyway get only uh, four types of orb you can get Veldspar which is the most popular and the cheapest to sell you can get Scordite which is uh, you can you can find it quite often, and uh, uh, if you know which exactly asteroid to mine, you can get very nice money. And flag your place, which is a good as well. And sometimes you can get Pyrox series, which can give you also quite nice money. However, py uh, Pyrox series. Um, they come usually with quite smallish asteroids which deplete quickly and they're not that easy to come by but certainly this is something that you want to consider uh, generally if you want to make money relatively quickly forget about Veldspar you need to look for Pyrox series and Scordite uh, and, and uh, of course uh, Plegio class as well However, which one you want to mine on particular day depends on particular price of the ore per day. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just go to this first belt here, uh, because it's in current system, so we don't even have to jump. I'm just going to mine a little bit of Plague class, Scordite and Veldspar, if I can find them, and uh, then we're just going to compare the prices. Uh, so let's just undock and basically get to any of those belts. The easiest way to find the belts is actually go to the scanner, probe scanner. If you zoom it a little bit, the belts are coming with. Uh, uh, if you have those, let me just zoom it here. Oh, those three like dots uh, like dots or squares or no that looks like triangles maybe but anyway those three things here indicate that there is an asteroid belt over there so I'm just gonna go to any random let's say this one 
warp drive active. And uh, when you look for ore, you're looking for the stones, the, the asteroids that carry the ore with the uh, biggest yield because the, 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 you can you can sell them for be, with better money. So when about first thing you always have to write uh, launch drones because there might be some serpentines here. Right, and this is our belt. So what we have here, those big ones are usually Veldspar. And this is just a normal Veldspar. So when you just run info into it, it will tell you there is just a common ore type. Doesn't have any extra percentage of yield. Now when you go on this one, which is concentrated, It gives you 5% higher yield. So if you mine concentrated belts bar, you're gonna get more money. It's still not quite profitable in comparison with others. But this is something that you need to know. Okay, now let's look for... This is belts bar. Belts bar. Now if you want to scan quickly the belt looking for some other ore, then you can do it this way. Uh, first of all, it's always a good thing to move around. So I'm just gonna move around in any direction. Uh, okay, now so I've got I've got this dense belt spot. So I want to see what's around it. So I'm just gonna right click on it and say and put look at. And if I unzoom, then I can see what's around it, closer to it. And I can just click. This is cordite here. Belt spar. Belt spar. Concentrated belt spar. This is dense belt spar. So uh, when you look the info, this gives you 10% yield, which is the highest that you can get from belt spar. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just mine a little bit of it. Uh, I can lock it, then just approach. I like to be close to those asteroids. I don't want to advertise to the whole area uh, that uh, I'm mining. A uh, miner generally has a range of uh, 12 kilometers. But when I start mining from 12 kilometers, there's, there's going to be a pretty big signature showing this uh, mining laser, so people can find me easily. When I approach this as close as possible, this laser beam will be very short. Not that easy to spot in the first sight. Of course, you can still spot me, but uh, you cannot do it just like immediately. So I'm going to try and approach it as close as I can. Uh, at the moment, I'm 300 meters. This is how I mine. I mean, you don't have to, but. I just I don't like to be disturbed, so I'm just gonna minimize the chances of being disturbed when I'm mining. Just gonna come a little bit closer. One hundred fifty two meters. My record is five uh, is ten meters. Well, it's, it's not that easy to do. <laughs> just to be just to be so close. Right, now it's approaching slowly. Uh, so I'm just going to mine a little bit of this dense Veldspar. So put two miners on straight away. And once they get the first round, I'm just going to stop. In the meantime, when it, this is done, I can explore the belt to see if there's anything else. This is something that I didn't want to click. Alright, my bad. So, right click, look at, and this is going to move my camera over there. So my miner is mining somewhere away. That's fine. And I'm just going to looking for looking for some other things. That's Veldspar. 
Well, but those bright ones are plegioclast. Plegioclast, whatever you want to pronounce it. This azure gives you better yield than normal one. But the best price you can get from rich, if you can get rich plegioclast. Oh, here we go. That's the one. So I'm just going to mark it. Oh, you're not still. I'm too far away. Right, but I got my first Veldspar, so I don't need to be there anymore. I finished mining, so I'm just going to approach this rich Plegio, Plegio class. Plegio class. Cannot still lock the target. Too far away from it. Eh, in a minute now. ship is probably bouncing around all those little stones here. Oh, lock the target. Excellent. Right. So that's my reach plagiarism last. Uh, now I'm approaching and I'm 12 kilometers away. From time to time take a look at the overview just in case if you don't have any any rats trying to come after you. Then you can just activate your shield booster, uh, so you're not that bothered by them. Drones will take care of them anyway. Down the ship is bumping around them. It's fine. Right. That's where we are. Okay, we're gonna start mining. Once I start mining, I'm just gonna approach it a little bit closer to make this beam shorter. I'm on 140 meters or something. I'm just gonna approach it a little bit more. As I say, you don't have to do it, but that's 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 how I do it. Right. Okay. So this is gonna be. It's gonna do its mining, and I'm gonna look for the third ore type, which is Scordite. Just want to give it a comparison of the sell selling prices, basically. Ah. Uh, and those selling prices change. They change sometimes every day, sometimes every few days. It depends on the market here. Now with the Scordite, ah. Uh, Obviously, I could just mine this one, but I'm looking for Massive one, which has a 10% yield and the best price to sell. So, um, condensed is better than normal, but I'm looking for Massive one. And uh, it's not in this particular place, but let's just look at here. Normal score died, condensed. Oh, here we go. That's one they want to look for. I'll try to lock it. No, I cannot lock it yet, so I'm just going to stay here uh, to make sure that I won't lose it. Do I have some plegio class? Yes. Okay, so I can stop this now. That's my massive score date. Again, uh, when you look at the info, it gives you 10% higher mineral yield. Yeah, and this one gets you the best price. So let's approach this one. Obviously, normally when you're mining, you just want to fill up the whole full cargo hold because you're going to get more 
out of it. But uh, I'm just I, I'm I'm doing that right now because I, I just want to show you the difference in prices between those ore types. Unlock this target now. Unlock that one. Stop the ship too late, it's gonna bounce off this thing. That's fine. I'm gonna try and approach it again. Alright, so that's my scordite. Those massive scordites come with a little bit smaller stones. Veldspar definitely comes with the bigger ones. Which uh, they don't deplete that easily. The smaller stones you have is for uh, Pyrox series. And with Pyrox series, you're looking for Viscosis Pyrox series, which have a 10% of the yield. And sometimes good price depends on prices in the market. Generally, you always look for 10% yield. Of all those things and these four types this is what you're gonna get in high security space you're not gonna get anything more uh, for for more rare types you have to go to you have to go basically to low sec or null sec which is dangerous I think mining with this ship alone over there uh, it's pretty much suicidal you just have to you need to assemble the team uh, ideally with some mining barge with better ship and uh, you go with the team which those guys will protect you from attacks so you can mine easily uh, but here in uh, high security you can just mine alone you see I don't even have a rat attacking me and they just come here quite often to those asteroid belts right so I've got this I've got scordite so we can compare the prices of those three. We can stop mining now. And let's see, in this belt do we have... No, I have to go one jump away to get to Pyrox series. Well, Pyrox series, depending on the day, is similar to Plegia class in terms of prices. Something like that. So, okay. As we've done that, I'm just going to come back to the station, which is, I believe, that one. I can dock straight away because I'm still in my system, so no okay. jumps required. Okay. And we can compare the prices per one unit. For today, because it keeps changing. On a day. There were days that uh, reached Pleasure class were uh, selling very well. Recently, at least yesterday and the day before yesterday, I found the best the best the prices on massive scordite. So the full 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 tank, five thousand cubic meters. I was getting, I was getting uh, uh, four thousand five. Uh, 450,000 of ISK from one mining unit. So I've done like four of them and I've made almost almost two million. Relatively uh, quickly. Right, so let's see. Now you have to move to item hangar to be able to see the sell prices. Right, so let's just stack all. So here's I will reach pre pleasure class. So if I want to sell it, the price per unit is twelve point thirty two ISK. 
massive score right is 14.53 so the price is going up still I think it was 14 uh, 44 yesterday or the before yesterday something like that so it's still going up so the price is going up it always uh, this ask price is going to tell you here if the price is going up or down uh, this one is going down you see uh, the reach plegic last went down 58.9 percent yeah that's a huge drop so the price was much higher and I was getting very nice money but it was about uh, a little bit over a week ago and uh, dense Velspar which is the best Velspar you can get it goes for 11.12 so it, it's this price is going up still uh, but still massive score right is the best at the moment uh, unless there's pyrox series getting up uh, which we will have to mine somewhere else, but mm, actually, they the, are the quite hard to find. Or maybe actually I'll do it. Okay, let me just pause the video because it will take uh, a while to find the viscosus, uh, uh, viscosus type of um, uh, of uh, Pyrox series. But if we find them, we we can just we can just. Uh, quickly mine a little bit and compare the price as well you just need to keep checking every day basically um, mine a little bit here mine a little bit of that of that of this and this uh, just go back see what's the price per unit and wh whichever sells with a higher price then go back and uh, mine the full tank and do it as, as, as often and as many times as you can or as you want uh, then you can get very very nice money in high sec without much of a risk basically so I'm just gonna pause the video and try to find this uh, Pyrox series uh, and uh, so we can compare the prices for today so I'll be back shortly hopefully although finding the Pyrox series is sometimes difficult and they have a very very small asteroid so usually to be able to do the full tank you just need to deplete two of them per one journey uh, that's most of the time at least this what ha was happening to me they have a very very small stones but let's have a look uh, so I'll be back when I find one right I found one relatively fast as you can see this is like normal pyrox series normal one solid which gives you 5% yield as far as I remember and those viscosus one they're usually smaller stones, so I had to zoom really, really hard to find it. But, well, managed to, so we're just gonna mine it a little bit. Uh, how come I lost it now? Again. Approach. 25 kilometers away. Okay, I'm just gonna walk drive it for a while. I to start stopping my ship, it's still gonna bounce away a bit really hard. Or maybe not. Oh no, actually, that's good. Even better. Right. Look at see the small little stone, not much larger than my ship, actually. Right. Let's approach it a little bit closer. can start mining so this one is basically 10% yield and uh, from those you can get pyrite and mexalo uh, 
sometimes with some ore, especially those ones that gives you the mexalum, it is more profitable not to sell the ore. It is more profitable to reprocess it and sell the material, which is the result uh, of reprocessing. Especially, it, uh, it applies to Mexalo. Uh, it basically will get you more money. Uh, but sometimes, it's more profitable just to sell the ore. So you just need to manipulate, the, 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 take a look at the prices, compare, and figure out which one's going to give you the best money. Yeah, it's a standard entrepreneurial thing, basically. Right, so uh, we just got some units. I'm just going to mine a little bit more. Because actually this Pyrox series is quite hard to come by. Just one more round and we're going to get back. If you want to get the estimation of the price, here when you're an ore hold, when you when you get something, you've got this price estimation, and when you hover over it, it tells you that more or less price is 31.10 ISK per unit, which seems to be quite good. But this estimation has nothing to do with the market price. I mean, it has something to do because it, it, it's similar, but it, it, it is the, the estimation. So you always, you always need to, you need to actually check the, mm, the prices on the market. And that will be accurate, obviously. So, uh, but then you, it just gives you the, more or less the outline. Uh, of what you can get out of it. There's a one more thing that you need to know. With this particular ship, uh, it has built-in extra security. Is depleted. No, I depleted this one. You see, that's because they're very small ones. It has built-in defense against the warp scrambler. So if somebody wants to basically pinpoint you, so you can warp, away, you cannot warp away. This ship has some defense against it, which is obviously helpful because you don't have to uh, add additional modules, uh, defensive modules against uh, warp scrambling. It's actually a funny thing. How somebody attempted to warp scrambling me once when I was mining just didn't work. It was one of those astral mining that you can see in the overview. Um, but since I got my cargo hold already full, I just walked away. There was no need to, to get into any dispute with them. Right, so we're just gonna dock. And have a look. What is the most profitable to sell today? Again, remember it's always per day. Yeah, you just need to keep checking the price tendencies. As I say, like about a little bit over a week ago, uh this um I always forget those names. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Teacher class. This one was selling definitely with the best price, and massive score date was not that good. The, the, the tendency have changed now, but it's all temporary stuff. So, um, right, let's move it and let's see. So, this one goes 
You see, it goes only for 10 ISK. And the price is dropping down now. Yeah? So you never go by this estimation that you see while you're mining. Yeah? This one went down 35.2%. The biggest drop still was all reached Plegia class, which was 58. So at the moment, the one that is selling the best is Massive Scordite. Uh, and the price is still going up. Yeah. And it's 14.53. Yeah. So always just double check. Take a little sample. Or actually keep a little sample here in your item hanger always for just comparing the prices. Right. So, uh, uh, and there's something that I was saying about Mexalon as well. So those two basically uh, can get you some Mexalon. So if I reprocess this Plegioclast, I'm going to get 816 units of Mexalon. Yeah? And this one, it shows that it pays 1,272 ISK for item. Let's just reprocess it and check if it's actually the case. It's 49, actually. Okay, it's 49 per unit. Okay. So, 49 per unit is way better than 12 per unit. So, you will find yourself, that you'll find that it's more profitable, actually, to reprocess it, because you can get some tritanium out of it as well which sells very cheaply, but still gets you some extra money, which uh, most of the time will cover re reprocessing cost, or at least uh, reduce it. And then you can just sell the Mexalon. I can get 38,000 out of it. I'm just going to sell it because I don't need it at the station. Yeah. So this is how you manipulate prices. This is how you do. Yeah. Uh, get yourself a sample. I'm just going to reprocess this as well. And it cost me 1,336 ISK to reprocess it. But out of it, I'm getting Pyrite, which says for 15 per unit, and it's going to get me 22,000 straight away. So my reprocessing cost is all compensated with uh, some nice addition. And if I sell Maxwell, I'm going to get another 24,000. Yeah? Here we go. It's way better, everything, than if I just uh, basically sold the ore. I'm going to sell this Tritanium as well, I don't need that. So I can always mine those things fairly easy. Tritanium is the most common, it comes from Belt Spar, it comes from Plegia class, it doesn't have to be rich. So tritanium is just you can you can always get it. Uh, it's very easy. But this massive scordite sells for fourteen point fifty three. Uh, I'm not gonna sell it though because I just want to have a smaller sample. So I'm just gonna reprocess, reprocess it. Like that. And I've got this little bit of tritanium. I'm just gonna sell it. And sell this. Okay. And I've got my sample to compare the prices. Uh, this one, it's a belt spar. I'm just gonna reprocess. The reprocessing cost of belt spar is 1147. Quite high, I have to say. But it's still fine. I've got some titanium. If I sell this, I've got 33,000, so the cost is nicely compensated, no problem, yeah? But uh, with this price of Scordite, I just don't bother with reprocessing, I usually just sell it. And uh, one full tank of this, is, is uh, with those rising prices, it would be about uh, four and a half... Uh, 450k from one journey. 
uh, and with prices going up it might be even more. So that's a very very nice and easy and relatively safe way of making money, especially when you're a beginner. Uh, if you want to stick to high security and you want to stick in high security, uh, also most definitely if you haven't purchased a bigger account, uh, because th there is no option to get uh, to get actually a cloaking device if you're not Omega. If you look in the regional market, and if we just do cloaking, yeah. So in the ship equipment, you generally you get those three cloaking devices: covered ops, improved, and prototype, right? And then when you do it all, when you click them, it all requires upgrade to Omega account, yeah. Which uh, uh, inevitably leads to paying real money for the game. So if you don't want to do that, uh, then uh, then you cannot use it. And if you cannot use it, it's very unwise to go to wormholes, wormhole space, dead space, etc., etc., because you cannot hide yourself. And there were plenty of gunkers just staying there waiting uh, to hit you. And if they see that you're mining, they probably hit you when your cargo is full. <laughs> Most likely, yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, so basically, if you, if you if you don't want to go Omega, you cannot go to 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 those dangerous places because you cannot clock clock yourself, which is one of the most important devices uh, to stay alive longer and to get yourself better chances of survival for that. Right, so uh, this basically is the end of the video. There's a one more thing that I just it came to my mind that I want to mention. It's a smart shopping, basically. If you want to, uh, remember always, you want to have this best ratio of income against expenses, right? So it's not only making money, but also making smart purchases. This is another, this is another obvious thing. And uh, but as I say, the what I notice people just all forget about obvious things very often. So when you want to buy something, whichever it is, right? Let's, let's say this this cloaking device, cloaking device. When you click on it, uh, and first of all, when you do this little button here with filters, okay? Why it's not opening? It should open now. Hang on. Should have this filters opening. Why is not opening? Quick bar browse. Oh, here we go. Now it opens. Right? So when I have a filter, we've got a range filter. So you can narrow down only to the station, and then we will show you items that are available only on the station. You don't want that. Yeah? Uh, you can do solar system. And then I will show you items that sell in this particular solar system. But I like to do region. And then it'll show you the items that you can buy in the region around. Now if you want to buy anything, then there's literally anything. Let's say I want to get this afterburner. Right? Then it will show you the items availability, how many you have, and how much they cost in the region station. Right, and here you will see how many jumps away you are. Sometimes, if something is already on the station, it will say station. If it's something is already in the system, but not in the station, but in the system, so you don't have to jump, then it will say system. Um, and it will tell you the prices. And look, for the same item, I can buy three jumps away, and I can pay for one item of 27,520 ISK. But if I want to jump five jumps, I can buy the same items for 20,000. And another five jumps, 19,000. Yeah? And uh, in real life, obviously, sometimes going to the different shop to buy something cheaper is not profitable because you have to pay for travel costs. Either you take bus or you take tra train or, or if you go by car. But in here, in EV, it's a nice thing to do the jumping between those systems it's free of charge, you don't pay anything. You can do as many jumps as you want, and there's no cost of travel. 
And therefore, you've got a pure saving by just traveling several jumps to the different system and paying less for the same item. Yeah, which reduces your expenses. Okay, so for this particular item, the cheapest price is here is 18,080 ISK and I'll go dial. All you need to do is jump six times over there. Yeah, but jumping is free of charge. Right? So, and then you reduce your cost. If you want to buy for 27, this, if you want to buy this three jumps away, three more jumps, and you're saving yourself a heck of a lot of money. I mean, on this particular item, maybe it's not a heck of, uh, but it all adds up. And if you want to buy 10 million afterburner, 10, sorry, uh, mega newtons afterburner, yeah, then the savings might be quite considerable, right? Here's 181,000, but here, six jumps away, you can buy it only for 102,000. So you're saving 80,000 ISK just by doing six jump, jumps journey, yeah? The same as with the... Uh, this especially applies if you want to buy ships. Right? If you want to just buy Galenti, for instance. Uh, let's say... Uh, you want to buy Tristan. Yeah? Two jumps away costs 4,000... 4, uh, 400,000 uh, ISK. But here, still three jumps away is 291. Here, four jumps away is 250. Yeah? So, uh, the more expensive item you're looking for, the more advanced item you're looking for, this smart shopping actually <laughs> becomes more and more significant. Because it can save you a lot of ISK simply because the journey in EV doesn't cost anything. You don't pay anything for warping and jumping. Right? So this is just like another thing that is always worth to remember because this time it will reduce your expenses. Hence improving the ratio between income and expenses. And uh, if this rate, the better the ratio, the quicker you're going to make money overall in the long run. Long run. Right, so uh, this is the end. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get some valuable information out of it to play better. Uh, if you uh, have something uh, we would like to say to improve those videos, by all means, please uh, send me a comment in my YouTube channel, uh, and I'll try my best to 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 change something. And uh, thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please hit subscribe and uh, thumbs up button, and then uh, see you next time.